We flew back to LA that night and I got home. It's probably like three in the morning. And I went down to the high school, which is down the street from our house. And the janitor let me in the gym and I shot all day. All day. I mean, all day. And this was right after that playoff game. And um, I didn't leave the gym. I just kept shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and shooting and practicing and practicing. And uh, I got a chance to let out the steam of disappointing my teammates and millions of fans. I got a chance to let all that out instead of bottling it up and envision that moment over and over and over and over and over. That, that was a huge summer for me because I, I I felt like everybody had written me off after those air balls, man. Actually, after I got drafted, um, you, know, you have to go in, you have to do your calls. Mm -hmm. you know, so I go in and I do a call and I speak to a representative uh, from the organization at the time. Mm -hmm. And they said, you know, they told me that, you know, they were looking to move me because they really didn't have any use or need for me. Mm -hmm. I said, they didn't have any use for you, even though they traded you for Vlade Diva. Well, you know, I was, at the time, I mean, I was, you know, 17 years old. And, mm -hmm. and I heard that, and I was like, okay. Mm -hmm. I know what I'm going to be doing every day this summer. Mm -hmm. All was day that? this summer. Train my butt up. Mm -hmm. You know, because when I hear stuff like that, I mean, that's just automatically just telling me you can't do something. You can't, you know, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. I said, okay. If I got to fight to get you in the gym, that's a problem. That's a problem. You want players that are gym rats, players that want to be in the gym, that want to work. And then from there, you build on top of that. But if you're lazy, man, I don't want to talk to you. I want to deal with you. You're going to make me feel dumber. You know, <laughs> you know you're going to lower my level. I don't think so. You can go over there. <laughs> because we all want to win. And Kurt, uh, he wants his players to be on practice. Uh, he wants them there every day. He wants them there on, on time. We got practice at 11. He wants you at 11 o'clock sharp, ready to go. Uh, it doesn't mean 11.05. And Actually, probably want you there quarter to 11. Exactly. He wants you there warmed up and ready. He wants you to get, be ready to go full out at 11 o'clock. Uh, he doesn't want anybody to disobey that. And uh, especially with you know, a couple of losses that we've had, uh, playoffs right around the corner, uh, he's fed up. And understand that you know, if we want to get to that elite level, we really have to put in the work day in and day out. Growing up in Italy, I was such a big Laker fan. Like a massive Laker fan. Like I, I knew everything about them. I was obsessed with magic. Um, I used to work on my sky hook every single day. And then, you know, to be like Kareem. And, uh, and then I worked on the baby hooks to be like magic. And uh, I worked on my runners um, to be like James Worthy, my left hand hook runners, right hand hook runners, and my pull up jump shot in transition like Byron Scott. Yeah, I understand. There's different levels of focus and commitment to a craft. I, I get that completely. If guys want to go out and have a good time, I get that completely. However, if you're going to do that and you show up to work the next day, you better be ready, right? If you're going to do that, you better come to practice and you better be ready to go. And if you're not, then I'm going to, going to let you know. And you know, I think the message was sent pretty, pretty clearly. Okay, so if, if, if your job is to try to be the best basketball player you can be, mm -hmm. right? To do that, you have to practice, you have to train, right? You want to train as much as you can, as often as you can. So if you get up at 10 in the morning, train at 11, right? 12, say 12, train at 12, train for two hours, 12 to two. Um, you have to let your body recover. So you eat, recover, whatever. You get back out, you train, start training again at six. Train from six to eight, right? And now you go home, you shower, you eat dinner, you go to bed, you wake up, you do it again, right? Those are two sessions. Right now, imagine you wake up at 3, you train at 4. You go 4 to 6, come home, breakfast, relax, so, so, blah, blah, blah. Now you're back at it again, 9 to 11, right? You relax, and now all of a sudden you're back at it again, 2 to 4. And now you're back at it again, you know, 7 to 9. Look how much more training I have done by simply starting at 4, right? And so now you do that, and as the years go on, the separation that you have with your competitors and your peers just grows larger and larger and larger and larger and larger and by year five or six it doesn't matter how, what kind of work they do in the summer they're never going to catch up because they're 
five years behind. <laughs> Since I started kind of picking up the training um, to go through a schedule of my day, I, I get up at six in the morning and I start, uh, I do a training by, for about an hour or so, uh, from six to about seven, seven fifteen, and take my kids to school. <laughs> and then go straight to the practice facility and lift weights for about an hour and then go out on the court, do a little extra shooting for an hour and then practice starts and then after practice, do some more shooting and go back home and on this particular day, I'd run the track and then come back home and do another recovery therapy session, um, end the day with an ice bath. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a full day. Uh, well, when I, when I start, um, you know, I'll start on the track. Uh, you know, I'll start getting about, about 5 o'clock in the morning and try to go out. Six o'clock, you know, what I need from here, you know, from here, you know, this work, you know, live for a couple hours, you know, after that, I'm going to the court, and I'm on the court until I get right. Talk about what led up to the big monster 81-point game. Well, it was, you know, a thousand makes a day in the summertime, you know, and going through things, you know, just as I would during the game. So, you know, I, I knew exactly where my positions were within the triangle and where, where the shots would be coming from. So everything that I did throughout the course of my training was literally simulating that. So it was all game shots. So when it came in the game, things were just automatic because I'd put my body through it before. You know, sometimes you get in the gym and you work out and you work on ball handling, you work on shooting, but none of it's really within a structure of what you will be doing in the game. Mm -hmm. For me, it wasn't like that. It was literally carbon copy of what I'd be doing. So it, by the time the season came around, it was all just muscle memory. No, it's, it's funny. Like, it's, to me, the mentality is a really simple one. In, in the sense that the confidence comes from preparation. You know, so when the game's on the line, I'm not asking myself to do something that I haven't done thousands of times before, right? So when I prepare, I know what I'm capable of doing, I know what I'm comfortable doing, and I know what I'm not comfortable doing, you know, right? And so in those moments, if it looks like I'm ice cold or not nervous, it's because I've done it thousands of times before. So what's one more time? First thing to do is self-assess. Like, what do you feel comfortable doing on the court? What do you don't feel comfortable doing? I mean, it starts with that. You got to be able to look inside and say, okay, you know, coaches can only tell you but so much. You know what you can and can't do, and you have to be honest about it. And so once we get to that, then it's okay, well, let's put you through it. You know, like sometimes you lay down in bed and you visualize things, and you just kind of, you know, just, you know, that's, how, that's at least how I would go to sleep. I'd lay down, I'd imagine playing for the Lakers, and I'd imagine what the uniforms look like, I'd imagine where we'd be playing, and, you know, the smell of the arena and all sort of stuff. And I would see myself, you know, getting hot, you know, and you know, score 10 straight points. And then, but in a dream, like, why would you ever interrupt that? Like, you're not gonna have a dream and be like, okay, and then he misses his next six, like, it's not gonna happen. So you just keep dreaming and dreaming and dreaming. And before I go to sleep, I'm like at 120 points, you know? <laughs> and, so, and so when you grow up, downloading that into your brain over and over and over, and then, you know, that summer, I made a thousand shots a day. A thousand, right? That's on top of weight training and my conditioning. I made a thousand shots, and it weren't just shots. It were shots that you saw in that game. They were specific shots. I mean, it was coming out of the corner, going to the pinch post, footwork in the post, coming off the screen. It was very specific. So when you download that into your system and you go out in the, on the, in the court and you're just executing things that you've done thousands of times before and you have that dream, then that becomes possible. What, what do you think makes you so good? I just practice hard, man. I just work hard in my game and try to you know, be good in all facets of the game. I play basketball. This is what I do best. There are certain people who really pay attention to their craft and really try to perfect it. Mm -hmm. And he's that for strength and condition. That's what he does. What did you do? Because you are back. You, you have the spring in your legs again. There's a youthful bounce to you. What did you do? Worked my tail off, man. That's really the... the the end of it. You know, I had a really good summer. Um, I was able to strengthen condition uh, my body. Um, didn't really take a break this summer because I didn't have to because I didn't have any injuries. Mm -hmm. I think the Olympic team, the experience helped out a lot because I was able to kind of play and stay in rhythm and but still wasn't overtaxing my body. I've had a trainer, the same trainer has been training me for the last 10 years, named mm -hmm. Joe Carbone. And after I shot those air balls, you know, I sat there and I, I thought, you know, as soon as we got Got on the plane, went back to L.A. that night. He and I met and we went through the whole season, our training regimen. And the thing that we came down to was that our, our conditioning program needed to be adapted. We needed to change it. All right, give it to me quick. What you do? And don't well, think we, I'm just we, listening all just for the television show. Awesome along, we worked in our conditioning with the track. We did Olympic lifts. We went out there on the basketball court. And we did that, those three things, in one day. 
-hmm. And we did that all summer long. We broke them up in cycles. Mm -hmm. uh, because at the end of the game, even though the shots felt good, the truth of the matter is my legs were tired. Mm -hmm. I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. And so what am I going to have to do now to get ready so next time I'm in that position, I'm going to make those shots. Is that what you still do to this day? Oh, absolutely. I'm always asking why, you know, why didn't this work out? Okay, why did this work out? Mm -hmm. you know, how can I make this better? How can I make that better? So I'm always asking those questions to improve. I think that's when the idea of understanding a long-term view became important. Because I wasn't going to catch these kids in a week. I wasn't going to catch them in a year. Right? So that's when I sat down and said, okay, this is going to take some thought. All right? mm -hmm. What do I want to work on first? All right, shooting. All right, let's knock this out. Let's focus on this. Half a year, six months, do nothing but shoot. All right, after that, all right, creating your own shot. And then you focus. So you start, I started creating a menu of things. Mm. When I came back the next summer, I was a little bit better. Right? And a I menu came being back, like, I've got my jump shot from 15. I've got my. Yeah, I got my jump away, shot from 15. My... I got my three point shot. Like just open shots, not miss open shots, right? right. And be able to shoot it with speed because those kids are so much more athletic. Yeah. And then the next summer I came back, I was a little better. And the summer came back, you next scored. summer it was a little better. I scored. Yeah, you know, it wasn't much, right. but I scored. And this you know? is 12, 13. 12, 13. And then 14 came around, back half of 13, 14 uh, years old. And then I was just killing everyone. And it happened in two years. And I wasn't expecting it to happen in two years, but it did. Because what I had to do was work on the basics and the fundamentals. Well, they relied on their athleticism mm. and their natural ability. And because I stick to the fundamentals, it just caught up to them. And then my body, you know, my knees stopped hurting. I grew into my frame. And, and then your athleticism, once you have the fundamentals, exactly. the hard work, the mindset, and you tack on the athleticism, exactly. it's then, then, game then, over. Then it was game over. Wow. <laughs> you know, you just, just focus on, you know, each step as it comes, each day as it comes. You know, it's, uh, you know obviously I've had tough moments. And, um, you know, um, the thing that I always found effective was to just focus on, you know, where you are at that moment in time. Just put one foot in front of the other. Well, you have to evolve, you know, so like the things that I was doing when I was 19 years old to prepare and to train you know, in terms of the explosiveness, the, um, you know, the, the impact that I would put on my body, the stress levels I put on my body to train and prepare, I can't do the same things now, at, you know, at 33 years old, because uh, it just be counterproductive. You know, so you kind of have to evolve and you know, do some cross training. And how much of a difference do you notice between what you were able to do then and what you're able to do well, now? Well, I mean, you know, I could... Is it glaring? When it becomes glaring is when you have practice in the morning. You know, it's like a 10 a.m. practice and you show up at practice and you kind of look up at the basket and you're going, yeah, I probably couldn't dunk right now. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, because your body's just kind of tight and it kind of hurts and stuff. When you're 19, you go up and you're just like, oh, that basket looks like it's about this high. You just wake up out of the bed and you start doing 360s and windmilling and stuff. And yeah, I'm not doing that anymore. The workouts that I do for the core or replicate the moves that I do on the, on the court. So you know, I, when I do my, my fakes, like that, I take a medicine ball and I work on those fakes. Right. So everything that I do throughout the course of the game, when I'm working on my core, replicates those exact movements that I'm doing, you know, during the game. So I believe in functional strength. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, here, here's why practice was important to me. Not from a, just the standpoint that I enjoy playing. Like, I enjoy being there. Um, I enjoy getting better. But as a leader of a team, it's also your responsibility to elevate the rest of the guys. And... What people tend to get stuck on a lot is saying, okay, the way to make players better is to pass them the ball when they're open. That's a very trivial way to look at things. What you have to do is you have to get them emotionally to want to be better. You, want, you, you have to get them to an emotional space where they wake up every morning driven to be the best version of themselves. Right? And how do you do that? And in practice, for me, it was a chance to, to drive them, to challenge them, right? If they're, and this is where you have to know your teammates, because if it's late, we just had a back-to-back, -back and we had practice the next day, and you show up, and guys don't feel like going through the motions, don't feel like practicing, it's important to know each and every one of them individually, personally, because then you know what nerve to touch. Some guys, it's like, okay, come on, let's, you know, we can do this. That'll get them going. Other guys, no. You got to figure out what button to push. You know, Powell was always Spain. If I tell them how they lost in a gold medal to us and how they're going to lose again, how I'm going to beat your ass in practice just like I beat you in a gold medal game, oh, that, oh he would hate that. <laughs> He'd hate that. 
But that's what practice was. You have to drive them. You absolutely have to. And if practice is more intense and harder than a game seven will be, then a game seven will be easy. But if it's not, then that's when teams start folding and capitulating. Just had all these kids, 24 best high school basketball players in China running, playing basketball, running five on five, running all these drills. And then at the end, we had this little game where um, all they had to do was run uh, this drill called 17s. 17s is really simple. One minute, you got to run 17 times from, from uh, sideline to sideline. It's tough. It's tough. You got to run it it's in tough. one minute. If any of you have been playing basketball in high school, you know what I mean. It's a killer. It's all it is is just grit. It's just, let's just run. <laughs> and then uh, this kid, you know, we're running, and this is for media. We got the media on the side, and, and if they ran, they get a pair of Kobe shoes. So, you know, it's for fun. But and, I warned them. And he, <laughs> I warned them. I said, if you guys run the 17, everybody gets a pair of shoes. If you don't touch the line, you get nothing. So everybody this, touched the line. So this is where Kobe gets his obsessiveness. So we're sitting there. Everybody's kind of happy. We're thinking, nah, they're going to run the lines. We're going to have a presentation for the shoes. And the kids are running. They've been running for two hours. Running, running, running. This one kid misses the line by like half inch. No, it wasn't even half inch. It was like about that much. <laughs> like, he misses the line. Him. Kobe's like, stop, 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 stop. We had to stop. We had to stop everything. And he's like, nobody gets shoes. And all these kids are like. Oh, they're mad at the kids. Yeah. They're like, touch the line. All you got to do is touch the line. That's it. It was this much. Touch the line. And, and you know, Kobe's like, no, nobody, nobody gets shoes. You guys sit on the sideline. And then Kobe made this kid run suicides, which is another drill. Baseline, free throw line, baseline, half court, baseline, opposite free throw line, baseline, baseline, and back. Three in a row. Three times. <laughs> you had to run three of them. Yeah. But, but the, the best message. part was, oh. the best part was, uh, the last one, Kobe ran with this kid. He ran with this kid. Okay. Yeah. It's awesome. He ran with this kid. and There's 1.1 mil million people are watching online. Crazy. He ran with this kid. This kid was dry heaving. He was about to die. Yeah. But you You're know, lucky he, he didn't die. No, he's, he wasn't going to die. He wasn't going to die. <laughs> but but the, the important thing to understand is you can't, you can't shortchange yourself. Like you're, not, you're not cheating anybody but yourself. Right? I mean, you're tired. You're literally this far away from the line. Why would you not go that extra to touch the line? Right? So if I let him get away with that, right, all of a sudden he starts maybe a cheat something over here. Right? Not give his best over here. Not give his best over here. And as years go on, he's going to be extremely, he's not going to reach his full potential because he's been taking these little shortcuts that just add up, add up, add up, add up, add up. And you can't let that happen. Our, our job as teachers, as mentors, as inspirers, it's our responsibility to hold them accountable to those things. The, the Shaq said that you would, he would sometimes see you practicing uh, without a ball, like that crazy guy in Above the Rim. <laughs> Who taught you to practice without a ball? Dude, you can't listen to half the hell the shit that Shaq says, man. <laughs> I, I, always, I always practice with a ball. I, I love shooting too much. Of course I had a ball. I'm not going to just, I'm not doing that.